What's going on guys, Victor here. And in today's video, we got giant Kubera snapper. Took a trip down to Key West to fish with our buddy, Captain Cody. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So Cody just got to the boat. That's who we were waiting on. And uh, tonight is big rods, a lot of drag. We got probably 150, 200 pound braid, 200, 250 pound wind on. This is the bait we're using tonight. Pole lobsters. I have been dying to make a video like this for you guys forever now. I'm talking about giant Kubera snapper. Adam's behind the camera. We got Rookie. We got Alex. Crystal. Calico Joe. A rash, like uh, remoras and stuff, or just getting like a good Yeah, a rash from getting pounded with a spear gun. Yeah. Cody's an animal. He just got done commercial diving. Now we're about to send it for Cabrera. Send it. That's just eye candy compared to a Cabrera, though. Little grouper? No, I'm just kidding. Those are big groups. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so this is our rig right here. Must add best hooks on earth. Tenno's right there. Double Tenno sword hooks for our lobster, crimped with like 150 pound leader. And we're actually zip tying them on, aren't we? Let me try a couple things. But yeah. Cody's the one you guys have seen us slay with a lot of times now with Stanley, with uh, Carl, Permit, Snapper, Grouper, everything. This guy is the real deal. I'll have all of his charter stuff linked below. If you guys are ever in the Keys area, you gotta check out Captain Cody because he is, I mean, he's the real deal. Let's face it. All right, guys, we just got out here. And uh, normally when you see lobster during the day, they're always hidden in rocks. So it's not natural for a Kubera to see it out in the open during the day. You talk to a lot of old salts and they'll tell you they've never caught Kuberas on lobsters during the day. At night, lobsters are out on the hunt looking for food, moving from rock to rock, and that's why you do this at night because it's natural and that's what the Kuberas are looking for at night. They're looking for Roman lobsters. So sun's going down, we're getting our rigs ready, and what we're gonna be doing tonight is drifting wrecks. So uh, Kuberas are spawning this time of year on the full moons in August and September. They congregate. Basically making Kubera babies out here. That's all they're doing and uh, trying to feed on lobster Trying to be on YouTube, you know funny story about this reel. This reel actually went for a swim uh, Had in the rod holder on the straight butt and it actually snapped and we ended up catching the reel back the very same day So it's still going strong. Let's see Cody's gonna show you guys what we're doing right here It's kind of a two-man process. So he's probably gonna kick me once I put this hook in. Keep cooperating yeah, what a good guy. And Victor, I want you to zip tie this hook okay. right against the, the, the bottom of the knuckle. Uh, put the hook facing down because they crush their heads up. So. Oh, so the hook's going to be facing that way. Right. I mean, there's really, you know, you could try whatever. You ready? I'll go below his eyes. Below, oh, yeah, there you go. Ready? Yeah. All right. So we're doing yeah. exactly. whole lobster going down for bait. And these are all legal lobster, of course, within your limit, you know? Have you noticed if they eat the, the head or the tail more? Well, they first? eat the head first, just because that's what's there. And then, usually you come up with a piece of the tail if you miss them. Really? Because yeah. I'd figure, you, I mean, just like us, like we go for the tail, that's where all the meat is, you know? Right. Yeah. So. What about cutting, chopping off your antennas? That doesn't matter? Yeah, SD card. Oh, no, I wanted to look natural, so. I've seen guys, I've seen videos of guys hooking them through the shell. I've seen guys zip tie them. I've seen guys fish them backwards, where they have the bottom hook and the tail okay which probably might be better because it's softer and they don't have to crush it up as much yeah so cody's just going to situate us we just want to make a nice sweep a drift over the wreck if we hook them you guys are going to see how powerful these animals are but the biggest thing that people have been struggling with past is sharks. Sharks know the Kuberas are here, so as soon as you hook them, it's a battle to get them up as fast as possible. That's why we fish the bent butts and fish max drag. You try to get them on the stand-up gear, but your best shot at landing one is in the bent butt gear because you just have the best leverage and you get the most drag out of it. Team moving weights up at the front of the boat. Me and Joe, me and Joe are talking it out. Look at the moon. You're telling me a Kuber is not gonna come up and smoke a lobster. Team moving weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Alright, so this was probably our third drop and it finally got dark and look at what we got back. The head's crushed. All they left us was the tail. You'd think that a snapper would want the juicy tail. That's where all the meat is. That's what we like, but we just crushed the head and like Cody was saying, we're, we're going to miss a lot of fish tonight. It's just the nature of Kubera fishing because you got to think it's a really awkward bait. You know, they're not swallowing it. They're crushing it. You know, I might have pricked that one. Let's try one it. in the head, That's one in good. the tail. We'll see. We try to get the hook so it's not like piercing its brain so he stays alive. So I kind of went in like that knuckle antenna area, you know? We're on, we're on, we're on, we're on. We're on. Here, who wants to take him? All right, we got our first Kubera on of the night. Crank, buddy! Woo! If that thing gets charged, you better crank. It ain't, ain't gonna get I dropped it back, or I dropped it back. Bro, he, he, he ate it so many times. We'll drop it back. Oh, you're getting bit. No, no, we'll drop it down. Bro, oh, real, 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 real. It's okay, it's okay. Let him do his thing. We're off the bottom, we got it. I mean, we're working fast, but we're off the bottom, so you don't want to lock it up anymore. How deep? We're like 200? Yeah, you're, cause that one, as soon as I, as soon as I hit bottom, he came back for it. Again. Get him in the belly if you can. Oh, oh my god! He's freaking oh, giant, oh, my god. bro! Holy oh my god! Put him, put him, pull him, pull him. He's gonna fall off. Tell me that. Oh! Okay. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Oh. Right. We're not in a rush. He's a good one. Caught one. Joe and Carlos had a fight at the same time. <laughs> Victor, bro. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, no. Look at that! You can still eat yeah. the tail! They even show the all day. Sweet. You'll fight him like 20 pounds of drag. You hooked up too? Yeah. 20 pounds of drag. Smoking. That's right, a we'll big one. Put it up more before you take it back. If you're gaining, back it off. And watch the rattle. A big one. Right a big one, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> What? Double, bro. Double. This is insane. Smoking. I don't even care if I kill him. I just want to see Joe type. Yeah, Joe. You can, you can fight him light. You don't have to fight him hard. We're way off the wreck. I mean, like, almost 20 pounds of that. <laughs> I can't like, believe like you got Okay, so this is the second fish we had. We did a drift with two baits. So, Joe and Adam on this rod, and then uh, me and Cody on that back rod. The moving weight team, baby. Bro, this Mixer is, is. I'm shaking. I got the Kubera shakes. It's real. If they're taking line, you want to lock it up. But as soon as you start turning Dude, them, you want to start backing it off. You never know if they're hooked super good or not. Right. In the skin. And that's why you don't want to have it. Like, that's, oh. that's a monster. That's a giant. Real oil the tip. Joe. Oh, look, what did you just do? Yep. No. Did he? No, he didn't. Kind of. Yeah, the battery's in the wreck. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh, God. Geez. Woo. He got. He got shark, but we still got him, dude. Oh my God, Joe, bro. There you go, Joe. I love you. I love you. Fifty-five. Hold that fish up. Let me see that bad boy. You. Oh my God. There you go. Jumbo. Oh my God. Y'all don't. Good job, boys. This is crazy. So there's one other boat out here when we first got out here. They fled. I don't know why. These things, like we said, they come out at night to ambush lobster. They're spawning right now. Easily 40 to 55 pound fish. And look at this mouth. Look at that mouth. That is a lobster muncher right there. If you, you couldn't pay me to put my fingers in that mouth. Really? No. <laughs> I mean, how many fish do you know that are out there eating lobster in the wild? God Those damn. teeth are just meant to destroy things. That's a 50 you pounder, Joe. Good, huh? Yeah, yeah. smoke yours. He was, he was eating it forever. He was sleeping on it in the rod order. He ate it for so long, he ate the top hook in the head. They're pretty similar in size, huh? Yeah. If you lay them next His to each other? This is fat, but no, yours is bigger. Yours is longer. Long. Yeah. Look at that fish. Bro. These fish are so dense, they're not like a grouper. They're no, right. they, like, they don't get them, like, yeah. just like that. They're, that they're not jet fat, they're, they're probably just like a 50 fit. something and like a 42 pound. As big as this fish right is, there. this that fish is probably right like, this fish oh, is shit. probably like 50 pounds and a shark <laughs> still try to eat him. That's why we fish those bent hooks. Look That's at him. So funny. His belly's completely busted open. The other side, it's unreal. Like better, There's a perfect jaw mark of the shark's jaws right there. All scaled up. 
Hold on, look, look at this. Look at that scale. Is that a Kubera scale or a tarpon scale? Right. Look at that. Dude, put that in your wallet. It's pushed against the fish. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so that was drift number like four, but two, Cody even said himself, like he's gotten big Kuberas, but he's never gotten two big ones like that in a row, which was, yeah, that was crazy. Me and Adam are literally shaking. Like, I, he, I don't know. It's not real yet for me. Tomorrow, when I see the pictures, but right now, I'm like, all right, whatever. We just caught two big Kuberas. Oh, there you go. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Let it sit. Real, real, real. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. There. there you go. All right, stop, stop. We're real, we're real, we're real. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. stop. No, he's not. Man, I know. So Crystal's on the rod right now, and as you guys saw the first time, the rod doubled over. Like I said, that bait's real awkward. He's got to, that Kubera's got to crush the lobster and angle it to get it in his mouth. And, you know, we're dealing with anything from 12 pound fish to potentially 100 pound fish. False alarm. We thought we had one up front, but, um, like, Every time that rod doubles over, we try to hook them. And if you don't hook them, what Cody will do is he'll put in free spool, kind of feed him some line to let that uh, Kubera really get the lobster down its hatch and crush it, you know? And also, they don't like to feel tension. We're talking about yeah, you're better just this, to the bottom and letting honestly, probably the smartest fish in Florida, in the ocean. Any diver will tell you that. Kuberas never let you get close to them. They're extremely smart. So you got to kind of finesse them a little bit. There we go. So this is, this is, uh, Adam and Joe's bait from up front. Look at that. That is one strong mouth. These things are rock hard. For them to have that much jaw pressure, I'm telling you, you gotta be really careful when dealing with them with your hands. Real, 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 Come on, Crystal! Heck yeah! Crystal, that's a real one. You guys should get a bite. We're just coming over the wreck now. Keep cranking, keep cranking. Real one. We get him up. Um, yeah, we're on the wreck now, so on, bring it up on, 30 feet. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, God. Just pulled one. You hook. had him beat. I, I pulled. I pulled so many off like halfway up before. Yeah. So it's tough. You're trying to get the balancing act of putting enough drag to not let them get sharked or go in the wreck, but at the same time to not pull hook because you got to put a ton. Just to get the hook through its mouth and skull, you got to put a ton of heat on it. Real? No, 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 no. You sure? Yeah. I felt it. Now, now, real, 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 Come that's on, come back gone. more. Come back. Yeah. People always want to say, like, that's unsportsmanlike to have it in the rod holder, which, yeah, it is. But when you're fighting a fish that's this big, you got to think about the fact that you want to land the fish. Because if you don't land the fish, you have the chance of it, one, getting in the wreck and then it's got hooks in it. Two, a shark eating it. So you might as well get it to the boat and fight it in the rod holder. 57. 57? 57. Hold on, let's... Get a close up on that for all the people at home who are gonna say it's not real. There's the seven, there's the 50. No, I'll, I'll zoom in on it, but. 57 pound Kubera for the big one. That's that's it, those first two bites, that was really the ones that we made count and uh, had a good crew. Very happy we did it. We got the two big Kuberas tonight. 44. 44? Damn, 13 pounds heavier. It didn't even look that much longer. They're just so dense, aren't they? They're so, they're so thick. All right, so we are back at Brooke's house, and all right, I'll, I'm just gonna let you guys observe the jaw in a little bit. I'm actually going to jaw mount this uh, fish. Adam, behind the camera, moving weight. I did one. Me and my dad did one, so. If you, if you guys wanna watch that, hate to self-promote myself, but no, I'm gonna self, self-promote myself. If you guys wanna watch that video. I'll have it linked below, because I've never done a jaw mount in Al or Adam did one with a smaller Kubera. I just like don't even know where to start. They're just yeah. so massive. The scales, oh, like look That's at this. insane, dude. The scales are just unreal. All right, so I think what we're gonna do with this fish is, I think we're gonna outline both sides because with big fish like this, when you take one fillet off, they just kind of like fold over on themselves. And this is a six inch um, boning knife by Dexter. I'll have it linked below and you guys can actually save 20% off 
all Dexter knives use my code LAMBSHARK linked below. When we take this flay off, it's gonna fold over and it's gonna make it harder to flay. So let's flip them around. So we're kind of just outlined both sides. Yeah, this is the fish. The bigger fish actually got sharked, which is amazing. I was very surprised at how little shark action we had all night, actually. So I know this is going to probably be the number one comment on this video, and that's going to be, aren't you guys afraid of Cigaterra? Honestly, I don't know. I don't personally know anyone with Cigaterra. I'm not trying to be ignorant to the fact that this fish potentially could have it. But I also don't want to live my life in fear and I think that Cigaterra is a lot bigger problem in the islands in the Caribbean than it is in Florida. Uh, I haven't heard of any Cigaterra outbreaks and for those of you guys who don't know, it's like an, it's an algae or some type of toxin that lives on the reef and through biomagnification when predators eat small fish, big fish like Kuberas, they're really old fish and they've just eaten so much so they accumulate that toxin if they've been exposed to it. There's no test for it. There's, you, you can't leave the meat out and a fly is gonna land on it, whether it has on it, a cat's gonna eat it. There's no way to know you're eating a fish with cigatero unless you eat it and you get sick. So, uh, but we're willing to take the risk. Is that fly thing a myth? The fly thing is a myth. There's no known test that, to my knowledge, of uh, cigatero. It's not a good disease to have, apparently. You, um, hot feels cold, cold feels hot. Right here, big snapper grouper, massive rib cage, big pin bones. You kind of want to glide over it rather than through it. It's like you got to hold it right there. From the scales to the ribs to everything. All right. Holy smokes, bro. Look at this. Look at that. That's a slab of meat right That's there. That's a slab. That's a slab of snapper right there. Looks like swordfish. Somebody said, oh, is it going to have worms? It does have worms. That's a not little a bit. Worm, is it? Yeah, it's a worm. Look, you're crazy. Oh. Those are worms in the meat right there. Adam was kind of bummed because he didn't catch one, but we were talking about it. When you're Kubera fishing, the whole boat's catching them. Everyone's doing something. It's just I got lucky enough to reel in the rod. And seriously, once again, Cody, if you're watching, thank you so much, dude. Like this is the fish of a lifetime and the trip of a lifetime for us. We had so much fun doing it. And I'm gonna take over the camera and let Adam tackle the other side so he can get a feel for this fish. Special fish like this, you gotta invite the master chef. What's up, guys? So what are you whipping up tonight? So we're gonna do a little like play on uh, on fish and grits. We're gonna do like Italian style. So we did polenta, got a little bit of broccolini. I'm gonna like spruce it up a little bit and make some romesco sauce, some gremolata to go right on top of the fish. I know, don't don't get alarmed by those words. It's very, very simple and we'll explain exactly how we do it. Yeah, broccolini, I'm just getting it seasoned right now. Then we're gonna like, we're gonna pop it in the oven probably around the same time that I pop the fish in. Salt and pepper and olive oil, and then right before we finish it, we'll sprinkle some garlic on top to get the, all that aromatic in there. James I really look up to, like you guys know, uh, cooking, he's like a role model of mine, and I'm constantly bouncing ideas off of him. So when you're thinking of a dish, like if you guys are trying to throw a dinner party or do a special dinner for your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, are you like thinking of colors and things before, like the colors of the tomatoes with the contrast? Absolutely. Like even if even if I'm plating something at home for myself or a significant other, I mean, I I always I always want to take pride in every single dish that I serve, and and that's why I keep coming back here too. I mean, not not to mention me and Victor have become friends. He respects the food, and for, as a chef, like that's all we can ask for. And his family is so nice and appreciative, and they're so welcoming. All right, so this is like a, just a little tiny portion of the massive snapper that Adam and and Victor and Brooke got out on the boat in the Keys. And uh, the way I kind of want to tackle this is, I mean, if you notice, like if you look at my finger, it's got to be at least two inches to almost three inches thick. So we're going to probably take it, cut it in half, butterfly it. Butterflying is really just like 
essentially you're cutting the fillet in half and just opening it and you can it looks like a butterfly like that's what i would recommend highly doing with this fish because it really will get tough on you and the cooking process of it would be also tough now james is just cleaning up the fillet like i said that bloodline was just massive on this fish i'm just gonna send it no. You're kind of left with that. Look at that beautiful white meat. Oh, it looks gorgeous. It's, it's amazing. So here's the, here's so you guys can see when I'm talking about butterflying something. You don't want to go all the way through. You, you can kind of check what the thickness of your fillet is gonna be like when you measure out your knife like that and you just lay it right in the middle. You wanna gently go through the fillet. You wanna hit, you don't wanna go all the way through and it kind of will fold open on you. And that's kind of where they get the term butterfly. It'll lay nice flat in the, in the pan, cook evenly. And that's about like a nice six or seven ounce portion. All right, so this is just, these are just like some plum tomatoes. You don't have to do this. Traditionally, in a romesco sauce, these are raw, but I deseeded them, and that gives you, takes away from like the bitterness and the flavor, and also it takes away from a lot of the liquid, because you don't want this, like the sauce is really gonna be thickened by this, and traditionally nuts, but that's where I'm doing the play today. I'm taking the nuts that I would usually blend in with the romesco, and I'm making grimolata for the top of the fish. This is gonna get a little bit of garlic, some basil, some fresh herbs, and we blend it up, and you guys will see the, the beautifulness at the end. You're making your own words up too. Beautiful yeah, beautifulness. <laughs> over here. That stuff to kind of take on that flavor. And with herbs, I'm pulling them out. But always finish with herbs because they will brown on you. And they'll kind of put it off color for the sauce that you really don't want. So these are going to go in the oven for like it's on 425, which I'm gonna keep it rolling at 425 because that's where we're gonna cook the broccolini at, and that's where we're gonna finish the fish. So you're not looking for you're not looking for much color on these. You just wanna see that you wanna see that garlic get a like tiny bit golden brown, and then you pull them out and cool them down and then blend them up. And that that's your main base for the sauce is the tomato and the garlic and then herbs, and then that's pretty much it. Alright, so this is the base for the romesco. We have those those plum tomatoes that you saw me roast off earlier with the garlic. A little fresh basil, some olive oil, salt and pepper, and then my little trick that I do to this to thicken it up instead of bread is a little bit of tomato paste, and this really just makes it that much simple. It gives it a nice rich tomato flavor, and it's going to pair really, really well. Traditionally, the sauce actually is made for fish, so that's enough said right there. So in here, it's just um, a zest of three lemons, fresh parsley from uh, Brooks Garden with the stems, and. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a little bit of toasted pine nuts, salt and pepper, and that's it, just super, super fresh. Fresh. Once again. And then you're just gonna take this and you're gonna blend it. We all have never had Kubera before, so I'm gonna go really, really straightforward with the seasoning, obviously, and we're gonna get the full flavor of this fish. Plus you have the romesco, you have the gremolata, you have a lot of the stuff that's already bringing flavor to this. So we're just gonna leave this be, and we're gonna just go straight. A little sea salt, a little of pink salt. Those butterfly plays look good. And then flip and repeat. And I always recommend laying a, like a paper towel down or a towel, a towel you don't care about, or that your wife or, or girlfriend or anybody doesn't care about. Because it, it allows you to get a nice sear on the fish and it absorbs all that moisture. And I, and I always keep it on the paper towel when I'm seasoning the fish because when you add salt to anything that has moisture in it, it's gonna excrete out. So that just, you avoid having that. And you get the nice color on the fish that you, you know that everyone looks for. While this is cooking, while the while the pans are heating up for the fish, I pop the broccolini in the oven at 425. Just a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna finish like when I get midway through with some garlic. When you see me cook fish in the, in the past, you just want enough to coat the bottom of the pan and you guys will see, you start seeing the smoke come up. Do not be alarmed, because you really want that. It's what gives it the sear. And you're gonna see when you when I lay the fish down right in the pan. 
It's going to see all the juices in. It's going to give you a nice crust on the outside. And when you lay fish in a pan, you want to press it down, but just give it like a nice little just push to get evenly covered with the oil. All right, so I can get a nice sear on them in the oven. Still with the sear side down, you're going to flip right at the end, right at 425 with the broccolini. Right when that broccolini is done, the fish should be like right there. So it kind of evens it out with the timing and, uh, and the preparation. Not like crazy color, because I didn't anticipate for this to have so much fat in it. This is all a test for us, but ideally, that's what you want in fish, some nice fat in there. You always want to check the stems. Obviously the floret part is going to be done. Just as a little test, break it off. People have a tendency to overcook broccoli, and that's probably one of my little tiny bit of a pet peeve, which I don't have a lot, but vegetables should be nice and bright green, and they should definitely have a nice crunch to them still. You, really, you want to have a, a little bit of time to rest. That's why I don't flip fish until the end. It's essentially resting now. And it's when you let something rest, it's still cooking. It's carryover cooking. And it's just finishing off now. It's, it's essentially cooked. Because if you take something like this, which you don't want to like jab things in there, but you can get a cake tester or like little tweezers. And if there's no resistance when you stick that in there, you don't have to cut into your fish and destroy it. Just stick it in there, no resistance, it's done. So this is one thing you guys didn't see us cooking, but you treat polenta the same exact way you treat like instant grits. Polenta is going to take a little bit longer, 30 to 45 minutes. Once you get it rolling with the water, you'll, you'll see the texture and, and you can overcook it or you can undercook it. You really can't mess up polenta. A moment of silence for the harvest, please. <laughs> so once again, this is the fun part. So uh, this is the romesco. We're just gonna do a little something something in the bowl right there. Make it like that. Off to the side. A little bit of your polenta down. Really straightforward and simple. Right down right on top of the polenta. Fish down right on top of that. And you're just gonna finish with the gremolata all around the plate right on top of it. Beautiful, James. Super simple Italian. Beautiful. It's mind blowing, doesn't matter who the chef is in this house, we eat so good here. This is an amazing meal. Thanks to James. He's back there. I never caught a Kubera, I've never had a Kubera for dinner before, but it's 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 fantastic. I love it. Once again, James absolutely killed it. Everything was so freaking delicious. I wish you guys could try it because it was like amazing. Um, I know everyone's probably going to talk about how great the food is, so I want to talk a little bit about the actual fishing experience of catching the Kuberas. I didn't catch one, but it was just so cool being there and seeing that giant fish. We free dive in like 15, 25 feet of water all the time, so you never see giant fish like that. And I know people who like scuba dive, re um, wrecks and stuff, they see big fish like that, but I can't even imagine seeing a giant fish like that underwater would probably be so epic. Caught giant amberjacks before, big groupers, tunas, you know, all that stuff. But just seeing a snapper that you're used to catching small, you know, that size is just unbelievable. And it even tasted amazing. It fed all of us. Adam took a ton home. We left the fish with Cody. All of those people are gonna eat a bunch of fish too. Absolutely delicious. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I only got to see the fish on the play table and it was amazing to see. Like I haven't seen a snapper that size ever. And the fact that today I got to see filleted and then eat this delicious meal, it was pretty cool. And um, what, what James prepared was just all that fancy stuff that he does. It, it just tasted as good as it looked. It was. Yeah. It, it was brilliant. Good, good job, James. It was, it was awesome. Thank you. No, I've never had polenta, but it was awesome. 
I would try it again. It's so good with this meal and the mm. pine nuts. It was fantastic. Thank you. And people should come to your restaurant when it's open. Mm -hmm. well, your boss's restaurant. Sauce for West Palm Beach. <laughs> I've never had Kubera before and it was amazing. Definitely recommend this fish and thank you James for another amazing meal. Definitely your best one. Thank you. Thank you. You guys at home like this is as real as it gets here. I've I read through some of the comments and some of the th certain things people had to say, and this is like I said, this is as real as it gets. These are the most welcoming people that I've yet to meet, and it, it's it's rare to find people like this. And Victor's really really pushing me to do better because I got a I got a home cook over I got a home cook over here doing curries and 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 all kinds of amazing things at home. So it just it gets me super excited to like come here and do more. We love having you, man, anytime. Thank you. And Brooke is not holding a knife behind everyone. <laughs> you almost brought like tears to my eyes. I was so kind. <laughs> so something that James said earlier really touched me deeply is he said he appreciates people who respect food. So it doesn't matter whether you're a fisherman, a chef, whatever your craft or sport is, I appreciate people who appreciate others' craft or sport. So like, I could see the love and passion James has for cooking and you know, he's also a fisherman. I mean, the last permit video I posted wouldn't have been possible without him. He caught that fish. So it's nice to be able to bring those two things together. You know, you bring your love for fishing, you bring your love for cooking, and then you bring it and tie it all in with family. And it's just nice, you know? The Kubera, we ate all of it. Well, we're gonna eat all of it. We gave it out to neighbors. None of it goes to waste. I really want to drive that through to everyone at home. You know, having this platform and being able to spread the positivity, I don't want to show any waste. And we're not out there just murdering and killing senselessly. It all has a purpose. And that head, you guys better believe we're doing a sick head mount and it's probably gonna be sitting somewhere on the wall over here. And then we're also gonna do a fish head soup. So look forward to that video. Thank you guys all for coming. Thank you, James, once again, you killed it, dude. Absolutely. Thank everyone, I, I mean, I can't say it enough. Everyone said it, it's like a broken record, but his food is amazing. There's no lies on these videos. What you guys see is what you get. Thank you, dude. And I'll catch all you guys in that next one.